Good afternoon. So I have uh, an update to give you. And first off, I want to thank Patrick, Stephen, and God. Um, so let me explain to you how all that shook out. Uh, Patrick, out of his, his own generosity, uh, had donated today uh, in order for me to be able to save uh, the, the domain name, thewatchmannews.com. Um, we knew that we were expecting, uh, a little bit from Jen's dad, uh, which his name is Steven. And, um, and so that fortunately got here today as well. That enabled me to save the web hosting and the dirtcheapreps.com domain. I know I kept saying dirt cheap, dirt cheap prepping.com i that's not it it's, it's dirtcheapreps.com i just want to clarify that i was i was i misspoke i don't use the domain not at least yet anyway so you know uh and i don't do much with the watchmannews.com domain but in light of what's going on with youtube and i heavily expect uh will be a continuing uh removal of video content and uh you know they're just gonna be doing everything they can to help steer uh you know what happens in 2024 i'm gonna watch how i word things because i have a feeling that there are a whole lot of people that are posting things that they think are are you know benign now and by all means should be should absolutely be considered benign but um you know uh it, it just uh youtube they don't care um the videos that have been consistently removed as of lately have been done so under the you know harmful conspiracy nonsense and as i spoke earlier all of the videos had q anon in the title now had anybody paid any attention meaning youtube uh they would have known that i was extremely skeptical of QAnon from the beginning and i covered what was being said on the QAnon accounts accounts because it, it at the time it was important information to at least know and i've told people many 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 times that sometimes the propaganda is just as important as the facts as as you know anything else because when you understand the propaganda and you understand that it is propaganda you can start to build a better picture on what is going on what they want you to think is going on and uh, usually between uh, looking at that and five other things uh, you can get a little better picture of what's happening but I, at no point in time, had ever just <laughs> thrown my hands up in the air and said, oh, this Q thing is the real deal. No, I called it out from the beginning as being bunk. And, uh, and it did indeed, indeed turn out to be bunk. And I know there's still people that believe, whatever. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, that's what scares me about this coming election. Um, is because I, I expect much of the same again to happen. And, well, let's just face it. There's a lot of folks that seem to be easily fooled. Um, again, you've still got folks to this day that will try to tell you uh, the QAnon was the real deal and blah, blah, blah. Anybody with a couple of brain cells to rub together long figured out that it wasn't. Um, what did it for me was the word DEFCON. When he used the word DEFCON in one of his little statements, that told me right then and there that he clearly was not somebody on the inside or near the inside because there's no such thing. Doesn't have, show me, I've asked people to do this. Show me a single picture, go to YouTube's, or not YouTube's, Google's, and show me a single picture of a DEFCON sign outside of a movie. And I don't even think that 
you'll even find one of those screenshots just natively on Google. I've looked. <laughs> There's none. Why is there no picture? Oh, well, it's a highly secured. You know what? It's a sign. And you can damn well bet that some cat somewhere would have taken a picture of it and posted it. Right? But you can't find it. Why? Because there's no such thing. But don't tell the ones that have their minds set that it is a such thing. But that's what tipped me off. That's why I knew and when I knew that uh, the whole Q thing was just a conspiracy, was just nonsense, and was just a way to pacify people so that they wouldn't actually do anything. Because as long as they can get people on social media ranting and raving and raising hell and talking about what they're going to do, they don't have to worry about a thing. Because they're venting all of their frustration on social media. They're find, finding an outlet to be able to release all of that. And so they're not actually going to do anything. And Red Team is horrid about this. Left, red, uh, uh, Blue Team, left side, they have no problem getting out there and standing up for what they believe. They do it all the time. They get criticized for doing it all the time. At least they're getting off their asses. I don't know what to tell you, but if you won't do anything, you can't expect anything. I thought Red Team was all about that. Anyway, I digress. Let's back up from that. <laughs> it's, it's just mind-blowing to me. And then now, I am, of course, taking heat from YouTube simply because I spoke about the subject. Again, and I could, you know, yeah, I could appeal it and all that, but it's not going to come back in my favor. I can tell you that already. It's not going to come back in my favor. Why? Because nobody's actually going to listen to it. Even though they say that a human will go over it, they ain't. They ain't. They're going to take a look at the title, see that it's in the title, and oh, nope, it's a justified case. Is it? I don't know, folks. We have reached a point in time to where we cannot rely on any of this. And that is the biggest reason I was concerned about losing the website. Because, as I've said it a ton of times, if you ever go to, you know, YouTube and look for the Watchman News and you find out our channel has been X'd, then go to the website. Because I will post something on the website as to where you can find me or what's going on. That the whole purpose of it. I have put it out there countless times asking the question, what do you want to see on the website? And I don't get any answers. That's why the website just sits there and I don't add anything to it. Because I'm not going to waste my time. Plain and simple. I have been building websites for 30 years. I don't enjoy doing it anymore. <laughs> so if I'm going to build something, I want it to be used. And so the only way I can ensure that what I build is going to be used is by getting your input as to what you would like to see on the website and then i can make it happen hopefully not i can't make anything happen but i can do quite a bit with websites um so and by the way the floor is open if you've got any ideas or anything like that something you'd like to see on the website put it downstairs there and i'll see if i can make it happen um but uh, again, I want to thank Patrick, I want to thank, thank Stephen, and I want to thank God for everything. I mean, that's a given. But I also want to thank God for his patience with me. I've said it many times that I am an unruly child. And that is from birth till now. And believe me, I know that I was a, a big pain in the ass and, and a thorn in the side to my family, to my teachers, <laughs> anybody I was in contact with. Why? Because it's my nature. Um, it's just my nature. And so uh, I don't treat God any differently. And if I've got an issue with something, if I've got a problem, 
if, if I really honestly feel like I need and deserve an answer, uh, I don't even back off of him. And so throughout a good part of this time that I have taken off and a good part of time before I took off, because this was building up, me and the father have been into it pretty heavily. Why? Well, just take a look. Right, I'm I'm doing the best I can with what I have, and I am not compromising anything. Right, I have not compromised a single thing to make a single dime, and I'm not going to. So I'm trying to to work within the narrow confines that the father gives me in order to make revenue. And no, that isn't, you know, I can't say, oh, well, you know, tithe, I need tithes. No, because guess what? Tithes aren't monetary. Anybody that tells you that tithes are monetary are looking to empty your wallet. Tithes are not monetary. Tithes are your time. You are supposed to give 10% of your time. Just because the Romans decided that that time meant time at work and that it should be 10% of your pay doesn't make it so had nothing to do with money, nothing to do with money. It was 10% of your time, nothing to do with money. And it didn't have to be necessarily, but like if you had livestock, if you had, you know, 10% of that money, no, no. Remember there was a point in the Bible where Jesus started chasing people out of the temple. Oh yeah, I know that was supposedly just because it was, they were trying to sell stuff. By the way, do you know of any ministries that try to make money selling things? Because that is the same damn thing that happened in the temple that caused Jesus to lose his mind and chase people with a whip and start turning over tables. You are not. that That's using the Father's name in vain. And I want to make that very clear. Baron Dependent needs to learn this. <laughs> He's the big one that needs to learn it. But there's a lot of them. Pastor Dow needs to learn it. <clears throat> Any ministry at all that you see that is selling stuff, and it doesn't even matter if it's a bookmark, okay? <laughs> it's not, not in the will of the Father. Again, those merchants in that temple that got chased out by Yeshua, they were just selling their wares too, right? What are we doing wrong? We're just selling, or, you know, selling our wares. What are we doing wrong? You know, that's just like, you know, we are warned about people will still be eating, drinking, and being merry. Yeah. Do you know of any YouTube ministry channels that might be, uh, well, very boisterous about their eating, drinking, and being merry? You see? You just you just can't walk away from all that stuff. You just can't. And so that is where a lot of my frustration comes from. Because I'm trying to do things right. And I'm sinking. And, you know, the Father has been gracious enough to save my butt. And a lot of times at the last moment. And... I don't know. I, 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 I'm sure that it's, it's tests to some point, but he should know. Um, when I set my mind to a mission, it's going to happen. It is going to happen. And that's why I kind of get a little frustrated when, uh, when things get a little sticky on just trying to do what he told me to do. And so we get a back and forth going over it. And it's it's many other things too. It's not just that, okay? But it's important, and I want to make this point again before I let you go. Folks really need to understand that whenever somebody says God is in control, they are full of it. They are full of it. God is not in control of the earth. Satan is in control of the earth. That's not to say that God can't perform miracles while Satan is in control of the earth, but it puts it more into perspective. Okay? 
uh, chances are praying to God that your football team wins. Probably not going to get a lot of attention from the father. And in fact, he's probably going to be kind of pissed off because you're idolizing men. Huh, never thought of that. Well, maybe you should. You know, I'm very careful about that kind of stuff. Because I did a whole lot of screwing up before this past 10 years. A whole lot. And so I am pretty adamant about getting it right. I am pretty adamant about following proper procedures, not dealing with things in any ways that I am used to dealing with them. Because let me tell you what, you want to know the quickest route in into the ditch? Give me the wheel. That's a pretty quick route into the ditch. I am and can be one hell of a destructive person. And self-destructive being the one that I'm even best at. And so sometimes things get a little ugly when I have to battle my own mind or if I feel like I'm in a battle with the father, things can get ugly. And, uh, you know, I have been... I spent uh, quite a few days where I didn't speak to anybody. And that should not be taken personal by anybody. But when I'm in a battle with the Father, you don't want anywhere near. You don't want anywhere near. You do not want to get caught up in that. Um, again, I hold him to the same level of accountability that I would you. So, it, it is what it is. That's me. That's who I am. And if the father's not good with it, he'd have booted my ass out of serving him a long time ago. Let me make something clear on that note. God wants you to question. God demands you question because you can't get to the truth unless you, unless you do that. God don't want you to remain silent. God don't want you to remain doubtful. He wants you to have that faith. He wants you to have the faith that can move mountains. But it's hard to achieve that if you can't call some things out or ask for some clarity on some things. And let me tell you now that God has no problem with that. God wants you to do that because that's how you learn. And when you learn, you grow. And the more you grow, the more you can help others. And that's what it's about. We're here to love one another and help out where we can. That is our number one mission on earth. So I'm doing my best to try to stick to those priorities to the best that I can and in the order that he wants them not always easy and it's definitely not always pretty so for those that have stuck through all this time 10 years thank you i don't know how the hell you did it putting up with me is not an easy thing and i know that so i want to thank those that have managed to stick through and but you know i think a lot of the folks that have stuck through all this time i think they get it i think i think they actually have been able to put themselves enough in my shoes to see where i'm coming from on a lot of different stuff it's been a crazy road it certainly has it's been a crazy 51 years the last 10 has been Pretty crazy uh, in different ways, though. In different ways. Anyway, I'm going to get off of here and quit yakking. I, again, I thank you, Patrick. I thank you, Stephen. And I thank you, Father. I'll be back soon. I don't know, you know, if I'll ride out till the first of the year or if I'll hop back in a little bit sooner. Let's see how things go. Um, I've had to resist hopping back in. 
I really have. It's not 10 years. You know, you get used to it. You get used to it. And I came a hell of a long way from that guy that first night that couldn't even fill out the hour because he was shaking so damn bad and and couldn't speak and all of that because his nerves are so rattled because I hate public speaking. This is not this is not me at all. I'm the guy in the corner you don't hear a damn thing from, but you better damn well know that I'm paying attention to everything that's going on and everything that's being said because I'm an observer. This has been a hell of a transformation as far as me being able to publicly speak, as far as me being really upfront and just right there, just right from the start with where I stand and just how firm I am in that standing. And that I thank God for, because if it wouldn't have been the years of being obedient to him, coming here and doing this, I would have never built that. I would have never built that. So, if I could ask one more thing of folks, it would be for prayer for the future. As many of you know, we had served the merchandise industry for um, a while, quite a time, almost well, eight, nine years. And um, that industry right now is pretty slim pickings because uh, companies are hurting. And one of the first things that gets cut out of a budget in a company is advertisement, any extra advertisement, because that's usually a pretty expensive expense. And um, so that cuts people like me out. We mainly do a lot of... Um, <clears throat> cut vinyl decals so if anybody out there needs some cut vinyl decals we are set up to do it in bulk that's what we do we don't do you know we're not the type of uh, merchandiser that necessarily sells to just the direct to the consumer now we we can and we will but that's not typically what we do what we typically typically do is make the kind of merchandise that is used to say promote business for instance, like let's say you place an order with a company and you get a nice cut vinyl decal in your package with your order that you can put on your car. that has got the company's website or phone. Number. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. So if there's anybody out there that needs cut vinyl decals, talk to me. Um, we don't charge like a lot of the places do. But remember, there is a difference between a cut vinyl decal and a cheap printed sticker. <laughs> not the same thing. So you're not going to get the same price for a cut vinyl decal as what you would a cheap printed sticker, but you're also not going to get the longevity. Um, there are people that um, back way even further when I was doing the, uh, the, the yard game business, um, there are people that still have their yard game set sitting out in their yard. They've been sitting in their yard ever since we made them, we'll say circa 2008, 2009 in that area. And they look as good now as they did the, the day that they got them. That's because we use good quality vinyl. And it's any, you know, cut vinyl decals will last almost forever as long as they use a decent vinyl if you use really crappy vinyl well then that's that but as long as you use good decent vinyl easy to get 10 years out of a decal you know um so if anybody's looking for a good quality cut vinyl decal uh, let me know we'll be more than happy to work with you on on a uh, on a bulk deal so and if, by the way, you're somebody out there that's looking for, I've got one other problem uh, that I should probably mention before I go whole hog here. Um, so I, I get fed up. <laughs> and one of the things that I've gotten fed up with, oh, I don't know, in the past five years or so, is printers. And I am so freaking fed up with printers, I can't see straight. I don't. Eh. And that was because when we were doing sublimation, you know, we went to like four frickin' printers in a short amount of time, 
um, because they're not really sublimation printers, the regular inkjet printers that you're jamming sublimation ink through. So I didn't want to mess with that. After the last one broke, I didn't want to mess with it. Well, our regular printer that we just print normal stuff with, um, it quit working and I've never replaced it. It's still setting over there. Oops. Still setting over there, but I've never replaced it. So that is what it is. Um, and I'm going to be real honest. I think if there is a replacement bought, it won't be a regular printer. <clears throat> There's really only one thing that we need to print, and that's shipping labels. And that's when we're doing business. See how everything goes hand in hand here? Uh, so we ain't doing business, so I haven't been motivated to buy a shipping printer. But you can get shipping printers for about 50 bucks and um, 50, 60 bucks, something in there. And that's all they print is they print, you know, the shipping labels. And that is what we need. That is what we need. When I, uh, when I sold that, that um, EcoFlow blade lawnmower and uh, the gentleman, because I didn't have the printer, and that guy wanted that thing bad. And so he had actually bought, he bought for himself a little bitty post-it, you know, you know a, a shipping label printer and had it shipped to me. And then I just put it in the box with the lawnmower when I sent the lawnmower to him. But that was the only way I could get a shipping label to be able to put on the box so he could get the unit. It was a big nightmare. And I can't believe that guy went through all that just to get that thing. So, yeah. And I'll, I'll reserve any thoughts further on that thing. But, um, yeah. So, that's which way I'll go whenever the opportunity arises. So, um I would say that for the time being, if somebody's wanting like just a one-off, you know, an end user decal or whatever, probably won't happen in the short term until I get a printer. Uh, just the way things are, I need a bulk order in order to be able to have the money to be able to get a printer. So that is what it is. But if you are a business owner or what have you and you would like some bulk decals, give me a holler. Give me a holler. Anyway, I've been jabbering for 27 freaking minutes. So I'm going to get off of here. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, God. And I want to thank you, the people, especially those that's been here the whole time. Holy cow. I want to thank you. And I want to thank the new folks as well. We are a rough channel. I am a rough guy. I I get why my personality isn't for everybody. In fact, my personality isn't for many. But I know me personally, I would rather have somebody like me telling me the truth than what I would like all these other content creators and whatnot that are just out, that they've got a different agenda going, right? Got a totally different agenda going. I've always kept the Watchman News about the news. Not trying to make money, not trying to... And I've been determined to do that. And I will continue to be determined to do that. Because when it comes to... Uh, and, and I don't have a ministry per se. But don't think for a second that there's a day that goes by that I forget that I am an ordained clergy member. There's not a day that goes by or a moment that goes by that I don't forget that. But I don't run a ministry. I don't know that I would ever run a ministry. What I would do is host gatherings and stuff like that in my home um, for those that want to talk about God and want to worship God. And I'll absolutely do that. But I, I, I wouldn't tag a ministry name to it um, because don't. I don't want to go there, you know, and even if I would take a clerical role um, in said gatherings, uh, I still don't want to be looked at that way. I don't. Why? Because I'm your brother. I'm nothing more. I'm your brother. All I am is a brother that the father graciously reached out, smacked me in the back of the head and said, hey, I got a more important job for you to do. That's it. Aside from that, I'm just a brother. 
I, uh, I know why God chose me. And it's the very same reason why I'd been struggling here of recent. It's because I will stand firm and I will not lose sight of the mission. And if I might get confused, I might question things, but the sight, you know, losing sight of the mission isn't going to happen. I just might be a little bit confused on how I'm intended to get there. Make no mistake, I will get there. And I hope to be able to take you all along with me. So anyway, again, thanks to everybody, all the viewers. I will be back soon. I can't stamp an exact day on it or anything as of yet, but it will be soon. And uh, pray, please, because uh, I could use prayers, seriously. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's really culminating on me right now. And, it, you know, not seeing my kids is one of those things. And every year now, things are starting to get a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And um, so, yeah, there's been a lot of struggle over that as well. So. Anyway, I hope you have a good evening and uh, hope to talk to you soon. Shalom.